Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com. DebatePhysics.com also. But the debate is, you know, there's nobody who can do it in person, that's for sure. So, as much as I would like to have a discussion with somebody who thinks they know what the hell they're talking about, uh, can't find anybody willing. Alright, and uh, <clears throat> can't even pay people to make video responses. So it's, uh, we're stuck with just this side of the argument until somebody can compose a reasonable, uh, debatable point. So I have to go look in comments and other places to try to find something uh, worthy of attention. And uh, so in that vein, the idiot, uh, the horrible, horrible, awful, terrible Ian Gosling guy. So he's playing with this rotation argument. So I've been making this argument that you can't, you know, you can't be stupid enough to believe that it takes 100 times the energy to spin a motor 10 times as fast or 25 times the energy to spin it five times as fast or even nine times the energy to spin it three times as fast. It's silly. And that it does nine times the work. Three times the spin, nine times the work. Too, too ridiculous. So he's trying to prove that, yes, it actually works that way. And so, so far, he's having trouble making it happen. Now, the funny part is, I guess I'll explain that part to him first, is that, look, if you want to f rig the experiment, like you rig all the rest of them to come out your way, it's not that difficult. You just have to, you already know that gravity introduces an unevenness in the application of friction. So like running across ice, uh, you can change how much friction you have with a surface, how much pressure you put on a surface. And uh, I don't really need to... I think I like that better. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel as bad. Anyway, um, so you know how much pressure you can put on a surface uh, by changing your speed and that gravity, um, you know, uh, is a time-dependent force, so if you go across the surface quickly, you'll weigh less, you'll not fall through the ice. And we've seen that with the rolling object thing. Okay, you roll something with twice the velocity, it rolls four times as far, but it only goes half its speed until it gets three quarters of the way down the track. So clearly it's not being affected by the friction as much the faster it's going. And the slower it's going, the more the friction has though gravity has time to put weight and pressure on it. So all you have to do is duplicate that. Now bearings do that a little bit. So when you have a round bearing placed all vertically, okay, in a gravitational field, the bearing tends to get more efficient the faster you spin it. So the faster you spin it, the less friction there is, and the slower you spin it, the more friction there is. But because the bearing is pretty good, he's not seeing any effect here. So he's spinning at twice the speed. It winds down at twice the, the time. Not, uh, and twice the time is obviously half the rotations. I mean, twice as many rotations. So anyway, um, so this is the funny part. Um, the comment, well, no, I, so I just explained. So all you have to do, so, he, so because it spun too freely and it took too much time and he couldn't be bothered using a stopwatch or anything, um, he decided to put an extra friction source. So he added a little paintbrush or something to brush against the axle to cause it to slow down quicker. And all you had to do, though, was put a weight on it. All you had to do is take a piece of metal. Here's your axle. Put a piece of metal with a weight on it. And then you're introducing gravitational force again. And so you'll have the same effect where you'll apply more friction the slower it goes and the faster it spins the less friction there'll be and so then you'll get the outcome you want <laughs> idiot anyway so but this is mindless marbles rationalization which is just so funny so the thing going twice as fast only spun twice as long it only rotated twice as many times blah 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 alright so he says everything is working fine here so that's the joke. Uh, <laughs> think about the linear case. Uh, twice the velocity means twice the time. Yeah, so that's what it should, it should figure out. You should be able to figure out that twice the time is only twice the amount of gravity for the object to stop sliding or rolling. That's right. So it goes four times the distance, but it only does it in twice the time, which means, yeah, it's really only twice the energy into the ground. Okay, two units of time, two units of force went into the ground, not four units of force. 
if the friction force is constant, so that doesn't even mean anything in this kind of argument, because how, how exactly do you even create a friction force that's constant? I mean, even if I applied friction by putting pins up, let's say, bowling pins, it wouldn't be constant, because if I hit the objects with something going fast, they're going to give each pin more energy because they can give it more. They have a higher velocity. So the pin leaves with a higher velocity, which means it's taking away more momentum. And the slower it goes, the less velocity it's giving away to each pin. So that's the trick. It's really hard to make a, a friction that's constant. All right. However, twice the velocity also means four times the distance. So he puts this in bold, and it's obviously there is no four times the distance. Okay, for the object to stop sliding or rolling, if the friction force is constant. So again, he says the friction force is constant. It's not constant per foot. It's constant per time. It's not, I mean, I'll put in bold. It's not constant per distance. It's constant per time. All right, in the rotational case, we will see that we will that twice the rotational velocity means it will take twice the time to spin just like the linear case okay however the amount of rotations more precisely the total amount of angles radians traversed will be 4x so he's saying somehow that if you spin something twice as fast somehow the surface area hitting a location the ground for example is four times as much that somehow it can make four times the line it's impossible it's, it's nonsense he just made this crap up all right so i mean i'll try to draw it but you know it's a little oh that's not the one i want to get rid of i want to get rid of this one yeah oh that didn't work either come on i hit the button ah you fucker <laughs> it's not working oh that's so annoying i hit it and it doesn't work how do i get rid of it all right, went away that time. Hopefully the recording was recording properly. Ugh, who knows? Computer's been better, but you know, it still has it still has bug juice for 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 blood. Uh, you know, it just wants to be buggy. Uh, all right, Ugh. all right. So you're rotating something. Um, all right. So, and so he's arguing that somehow I could, in some possible way, okay, that if I rotated it twice, okay, so, so I have these two rotations, right, these two rotations. So one is only rotating one time a second, you know, going, this spot goes around, comes, stops here, this spot goes around, stops here, this spot goes around, stops here. So something going twice the velocity is just doing this. It's exactly twice the linear distance. If I took this line, I made a linear distance, it would be this long, and then I would just add this long, and that's all I would have. I wouldn't have four times the radians or four times the distance in any way. This would be one unit of distance. This would be two units. This would be two units of, of angular, uh, you know, radians are just, I think, a third of a 360, so they're like 120 or something. Uh, anyway, um, and so all you're really talking about is, yeah, it has to be exactly the same. Twice the speed is just twice the rotational rate. It just means that it's the same thing as saying this is one rotation. This one does two rotations in the same time. It's just two distances. One plus one equals two. <laughs> two distances. There's no four distances. So I, I, uh, I think that's a simple enough explanation. There's no possibility that this mushy road is anything near a truth. And he says it in bold type, and he says it so arrogantly, and it's just, it's not, and he just keeps saying it in numerous comments, he just keeps saying the same tripe. Okay, um, all right, so you should have been counting how many rotations it did instead of the time it took to come to a stop. The number of rotations are the same, you can't change how many rotations it did. I mean, you can't. It didn't make more rotations. It can't go the speed without it only being twice the number of rotations it's starting with. How can it end up with four times as many if it starts with only twice as many? If it, if it only has twice as many rotations in the first millisecond, how can it get to four? 
It's impossible. It, and when it's going its fastest, it's not doing four times. So how can, when it starts to slow down, it ends up being four times? That's ridiculous. Okay, so anyway, again, I emphasize, both draft science and mainstream science says exactly the same thing about the times. No, I mean, the, the fact that, you know, whether or not time or distance matters. And obviously, the time is the thing that's constant. The force of gravity being 9.8 meters per second is the constant. It's not the same gravity over the same distance. It's the same gravity in the same amount of time. And that's the fundamental argument. And the distances. <laughs> this experiment will not distinguish between the two models. So in a sense, it obviously is distinguishing because it's showing the error. It's showing you that twice the speed all right, is only twice the energy. Because if you use some other way of extracting the energy, not gravity, you don't get four times because you're not using a time-dependent force. If you use a force to take the energy away, uh, a friction that's not gravity-dependent, it's not going to be time-dependent then. And you're going to get an outcome that's going to show you the real truth. Okay, you're going to have even friction. All right, Draft Science and his extremely dishonest fans will <coughs> falsely claim victory. Uh, well, obviously, there's no victory because it just shows that you can contrive the experiment to produce any results you want by just changing how you extract the energy. So how you put the energy in or how you extract the energy uh, allows lots of room for shenanigans. Okay, uh, the real test is, you know, again, the Mythbusters, you know, car crash is kind of hard to refute. Nowhere even close, you know, not even three times the damage, nothing, not even close to four times the damage, really, really hard close to twice the damage. Those experiments are hard to refute because the wheel took twice the time to come to a stop, yes, and spun twice as many times. But the wheel also took four times as much radians to come to a stop. So that's just a claim he's making. Somehow it was going four radians when it was just doing this twice the spinning thing. How could it just spin twice as fast and do four radians? It can't do that. If both models agreed on both time and angular distance, then this experiment cannot be used as a victory for any model. So it's just as ridiculous as him saying, if he made it come out four times the distance, if I roll the ball and it goes four times the distance, it's somehow, it can't be used as evidence. It doesn't, <laughs> of course it can be. Um, and obviously the Mythbuster car crash can be. All right. And the very fact that in 300 years they have absolutely no evidence supporting this nonsense. I can't believe that, you know, people like uh, Gosling, as much as he's a scum shit, I can't believe that really in his heart he actually thinks it takes 100 times the gas to drive a car 100 miles an hour versus 10 miles an hour. 100 times more gas. <laughs> A hundred units of gas versus ten units of gas. I can't believe he's that stupid. I mean, he's stupid, but I can't believe I can't believe that any I can't believe that any person who doesn't know ahead of time that they're supposed to say this stupid thing that yes, it's a hundred times the fuel would answer the question that way. I'm sure if you ask them on a test, you know how much how much more gas do you have to use to go fifty miles an hour? I'm sure some people will actually say, oh, just four times or so, three times, because they actually know the engine gets more efficient, and they'll actually not use uh, per unit the same amount of fuel. They'll actually use less fuel uh, per unit of distance, per unit of velocity. So the Brozo made a whole comment, but he has no clue. Frankly, he just admits, I don't know. And then he asked an AI to answer the question, and that was just a waste of time. Because the AIs are just going to repeat the jargon. They're just going to repeat the Wikipedia page. I mean, this whole AI thing, like somehow AI can do something original. All they can do is mix the ingredients that is, uh, you know, the pop culture says is the truth. So its answers will just tell you what pop culture says so. And that's it. There's nothing, it doesn't do any better than that. I mean, it has better grammar than most of us. Uh, it speaks better than we do, but it doesn't think better. All right.
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's enough. I, why, why rag on about it? So he's given up. So he tried three different attempts to get his uh, four times the energy being produced, whatever you want, however you want to describe it, four times the fuel or four times the energy. So this is kind of a, he's saying it's four times the energy. So it's spinning twice as fast. They say it has four times the energy. I don't even know how they can even imagine where the four times comes from. And so this is right back to the scale argument. I think I'm going to make a short about the scale argument. But I mean, just how stupid it is, right? I mean, they're telling you. <laughs> you, put, you put one battery on the scale, that's one unit of energy. And I do exactly the same action. And I put a second battery on the scale. Now they say there's four units of energy in, in, you know, four units of energy in the scale. That's all I did. I do exactly the same act. One unit of energy looks like that. Four units of energy looks like that. 200 pounds is really 400 pounds? Doesn't make any sense. Ridiculous. And the fact that people can't admit that doesn't make sense. It really needs to be clarified how that's possible. How is it possible? Because it's free energy, right? I mean, frankly, I mean, how, what else can you call it? I do two units of work and I get four units of energy? Well, you know, that's free energy. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing that you have to have this argument with people who, again, can figure out not to stick a fork in their eye, but they can't do this simple one plus one math escapes them. One plus one equals two. Doesn't equal four. Ha <laughs> ha.